Hello everyone, my name is Alexander Vishratin, I am a senior researcher at Tmo University. In this presentation I will talk about Peregrine, a numeric time series database that we developed in cooperation with Siemens. Uh, the main motivation of this project came from two use cases that are very common uh, in the industrial data analysis. Uh, the first one is browsing, uh, visual browsing of, through large periods of data while zooming in and out. And the second is uh, the search for time intervals where the value satisfies some complex condition. For example, when we perform uh, anomaly search in the data. Uh, we also had a uh, quite challenging set of requirements for the target database. Despite storing terabytes of data uh, for tens of years and performing search and uh, extraction requests at very high speed, we also needed to store all the data in Amazon S3, that is relatively cheap uh, remote storage, remote object storage, uh, that is accessed via the network. The core idea of our approach is to minimize uh, communication with the backend storage at all costs. To do so, we needed to precisely navigate in data files to read only the required data uh, during the extraction make as few requests as possible on any uh, request and uh, generate small index and data files to minimize the amount of data that we transfer uh, over the network. And the first part of the approach is the way how we generate indices. This method is, uh, that we developed is called uh, three-tier data indexing. First of all, it is worth mentioning that uh, every sensor has its own independent index. Uh, when we built uh, the index from the input time series data, it is split into data chunks by equal timestamps that are called uh, block intervals. From these chunks, we extract meta information that is used for extraction and metrics that are used for search requests. Uh, this data is written into the index blocks that are then combined into index segments. Uh, these segments uh, also have a fixed uh, time length that is called segment interval. Segments have metadata and metrics that are combined from uh, metrics of the blocks that, uh, that are stored in this segment. And segments are then combined into the index that stores uh, block and segment intervals. Having all this information in the index helps to, first of all, perform search requests without reading any data from the backend storage. And it also enables uh, aforementioned precise navigation in data files to read only required parts during extraction requests. So what does uh, metadata look like and how does it help with the extraction? Uh, first of all, block metadata. Uh, except for metrics that will be covered a bit later, it has only three fields. Uh, the number of elements in the corresponding data chunk, length of uh, the encoded data, and the flag whether uh, the data was compressed during en encoding. A uh, segment contains uh, its unique identifier that is basically the name of the segment file in the backend storage. Uh, it also has a uh, segment start time that is essential for fast search and extraction and version uh, that helps to keep the data consistent. Index contains a unique identifier that is set during the initial data upload and uh, this identifier, basically the name of the sensor that is stored, uh, that is related to this index. Uh, index also stores uh, data type of the sensor. Uh, Peregrine supports all standard numeric data types, for example, uh, in integer, 32-bit integer, 64-bit uh, floating point numbers, etc. Uh, e uh, index also stores block and segment intervals, which are used in all operations uh, related to the data, and the version, again, for the sake of consistency of our data. Uh, the second part of our approach is uh, the read-optimized series encoding, 
and it is how we encode the data into its internal representation. The encoding is performed uh, for every data chunk that is loaded into the storage. And it is done together with index generation. Uh, basically, the size of uh, the binary array that we get after the encoding is the encoded data length that is stored in the index block. Uh, the encoding was designed to solve problems of minimizing both uh, the number of requests and the data size. Uh, encoding consists of two steps. On the first step of the encoding, we perform delta encoding of input data. And on the second step, that is optional, we compress uh, the, del the delta encoding representation to make the data even smaller. Resulting compressed binary arrays are stored in the backend storage as segment files. I would like to give some details on how the encoding is performed. Uh, the most distinctive feature of our data format is that timestamps and values are encoded and stored together. It allows to read the data from the backend storage with only one request instead of several requests for any column-based form. And uh, speaking about the delta encoding, we store timestamp deltas using unsigned 32-bit uh, integer values. So they take only 4 bytes instead of 8 originally. It might seem uh, as a limitation, but it still allows to have very large gaps between the timestamps. For example, if we store uh, the data, the time data in milliseconds, uh, the maximum gap would be about 49 days. And for values, we calculate uh, deltas not of uh, values themselves, but of their binary representations to get uh, longer zero field uh, bit sequences that can be compressed better. And on the second step, uh, we compress the delta encoding representation using Z standard algorithm. And the resulting compressed binary arrays are loaded into backend storage. Uh, to describe the methods of index building and uh, delta and data encoding form the basis of the distributed time series database that is called Pedigree. It has three main parts. Uh, the first one is the core that implements uh, indexing and encoding logic as well as it provides uh, API for working with the data. Uh, the second part is uh, the modular system that allows to easily uh, add new ways uh, of reading and writing the data, new backend storages, metrics, and transformations. And the third part is the cluster that enables a distributed and fault tolerant operation of Pedigree uh, with the help of Raft consensus algorithm. Let's dive into how Pedigree Core performs uh, data manipulation operations. Uh, the first one is data uploading. As it was shown in three-tier index, uh, when new data comes in, it is split into data chunks. Uh, after, we, after that, we go through chunks, encode the data, and create index blocks. For index blocks, the core also calculates metrics. Uh, then the core combines encoding, encoded chunks uh, into segment files according to block and segment intervals and combines index blocks into segments that are then written into the index. And the core also updates versions of uh, segments and the index and uh, finally writes segment files and index to the backend storage. Uploading uh, is complete only when all steps are completed successfully. So this ensures the integrity of our data. And the next is the search. This operation returns uh, time intervals when the value of the target sensor satisfied some condition. As it was stated earlier, the search is performed using only index. With this comes a minor limitation of this operation. Minimal granularity of the results is the block interval. And because of that, it is important to set block and segments intervals according to the use cases of sensors that are stored in the storage. During the search, the core checks time and value conditions for the segments 
and then if uh, some segment satisfies conditions checks its blocks time condition is the interval specified by the user in the request value condition is more complex it is a query that consists of metric conditions combined by logic operations and the, easier, the easiest way to explain this is by example on this slide you can see a query uh, that has three metric conditions and two logic connections uh, metric conditions has three parts the name of the metric for example minimum opera operator similar to operations in mongodb uh, for example uh, uh, lower than equal lte and the value in this example uh, 200 after checking all necessary blocks and collecting results the core returns uh, these results to the user the last but not the least operation that I want to discuss is data extraction. Peregrine supports four types of extraction. Full extraction, which is getting all values within time interval. Sampling the data with a user-specified time step. Aggregating the data according to the set of metrics provided by the user. And transforming the original data to some other form. So, how is the extraction process is connected with all the metadata that is stored in the index? At the first step of the extraction, the core uses segment start times and segment interval to understand from what segments to extract the data. Then, for every selected segment, uh, the core calculates what blocks to extract from the backend storage. Uh, for this, uh, it uses uh, the start time of the segment and block interval. After that, the core uses position of target blocks uh, within the segment and encoding data lengths from every block to get the range of bytes to be loaded from segment files that is stored in the backend storage. At next steps, uh, the core extracts uh, the data uh, decompresses it if required and reads the data. For that, it performs a delta decoding of the data. The second part uh, of Peregrine is its modular system. Uh, it is responsible for making the storage flexible and extensible. There are five modules that are basically programming interfaces uh, that the user has to implement in order to add some new module or new functionality to Peregrine. Uh, the first module is storage. It contains methods for integration with backend storage. Indices reading and writing, uh, writing segment files and reading parts of segment files. Uh, reader module has only one method for reading data elements from the input stream. For the sake of optimization, data chunks are created and processed on the fly while we read the data. Writer module is responsible for converting all possible results of, to some output form, for example, uh, JSON, CSV, Parquet, etc. Metrics are aggregated statistical characteristics for the data, for example, minimum, average, standard deviation, and others. Metrics can be combined, that is crucial for combining index blocks into segments. And transformations are very useful when we need to change uh, data in some way during the extraction. For example, calculate rolling average of the values as we extract them. Peregrine cluster provides users with horizontal scalability and fault tolerance. Our cluster operates over HashiCorp implementation of raft consensus algorithm. This algorithm provides consistency of a cluster. It is especially important for Peregrine because to eliminate the need to handle collisions, only one sensor update at a time is allowed. That is why on every update we need to know where required indices are located in order to properly update them. Raft log in Peregrine stores information necessary for recreation of the cluster state when the node starts. For example, information about the events that change the cluster state, addition of a new node, failure of a node, uploading of a new sensor, and changing replication factor. 
To analyze the performance of Peregrine, we designed two sets of experiments. The first one was performed in our dedicated high-performance blade cluster. In this series of experiments, we compared the performance of Peregrine with ClickHouse and InfluxDB. In the second series of experiments, we deployed Peregrine in Amazon EC2 environment and investigated how performant is S3 compared to EBS as a backend storage. The first experiment is the on-premise data uploading. From the results, we can see that ClickHouse clearly provides the highest throughput of uh, ingesting the data. But Peregrine, with the help of read optimized encoding, generates the most compact representation of the input data with four times compression. On this slide, we can see the results of experiments on search and extraction that were conducted on four nodes. Since Peregrine stores all metadata needed for the search in indices that are loaded into the memory, it can execute 10,000 uh, concurrent, re concurrent requests in only 1.2 seconds, whereas other solutions, despite having aggregated tables, uh, need much more time to execute such requests. And speaking about extraction, Peregrine also provides the best performance among all three solutions. And for the case of extraction of 8.6 billion points, provides throughput of 24 million points per second. Experiments conducted in Amazon EC2 environment demonstrated that S3 is up to twice more efficient than EBS as a backend storage when executing large extraction requests. And it is because of EBS synthetic limitations on input-output operations per second and throughput. And speaking about the worst case for S3 when it provides seven times slower response time, we talk about uh, the difference between 50 and 350 milliseconds. So for the most cases, that is not very big deal. And EBS provides the same throughput as S3 only when Peregrine is deployed on seven nodes, because S3 for at this point reaches the network speed limit. So in this paper, we present Peregrine, high performance storage for numeric time series. Combination of small yet powerful index with read optimized encoding allow to achieve high speed of data manipulation in both on-premise and cloud environments. Thank you very much for your attention.